everyone, my name is Stacey Chester. I am the on-site manager here at the Edward D. Museum. This museum is nestled in the foothills of Cherry Valley. We're a 16-acre property. It is staged after a house. We have a koi pond and beautiful legacy gardens. And it was founded by Edward Everly and Dean Stout in the late 50s. Then it was gifted to the county of Riverside in 1964. This is not a normal museum. It's kind of set up like a house. So let's take a step back in the history and see how people lived in the 16th to 18th century. Hello and welcome to the Pine Room. We'll begin with the pine wood paneling that you see around you, which is why it's called the Pine Room. It was done by renowned sculptor Greenling Gibbons. We'll walk over here just to look at the detail of his work. Now normally you would see pea pods, which are the signature of Gibbons works, but this is one of his first major projects. It was done for the first, the home of the first Earl of Essex. Next we'll walk on over to our game area, much like today people amuse themselves with different types of games. So on this library table, for example, you see a chessboard, you slide it open, and there's a game called Trick Tack, which is very similar to backgammon. Over here is another interesting multi-purpose game table. It's decorated with lacquer, and you can see you can move it around for different games. So this is more of a flat surface for a card game, like Lou, which sits on, on the table. It was, it's similar to poker, and it's kind of like a tricking um, betting game. Then if you flip it over, you'll see a chessboard, and you can also fold it up and put it in the corner. All right, next we're going to walk over and talk about tea. Tea was a dedicated part of many people's lives for many centuries. In a home like this, people would have had afternoon tea and dinner tea. But over the years, the term high tea has come into play. But that was used only for the working class. The working class often had tea at the end of the day served with a big meal after a hard day's work, and often at a higher dining, dining table, which is why it's called high tea. That is it for the pine room. I'm going to send it off to the blue room. All right, thank you, Bradley. Now it's time to step back into time a little bit further, into the age of the Enlightenment period. In these days, they had science and religion and politics, and they wouldn't sit around a phone. They'd sit around this beautiful room and have a piano forte played. Come on in and let Kathy describe how this operated. Hi, so welcome to the Blue Room. As Stacy said, this room is themed based on the Enlightenment period. At this period, what we have is emergence of art and science coming together in ideas of innovation and beauty. In this cabinet here, we can see the inlay of a Dutch secretary and displayed are examples of paperweights. Paperweights use the technology of glass blowing, along with learning about chemistry and new materials that went into making colorants for the glass. And over here is set up to resemble what it was like to visit one of these rooms. The whole purpose of a room like this was to engage in educational conversation. People would debate ideas, discuss new philosophies of science, religion, poetry, art, but the whole point of that was to gain knowledge from someone else. Not to just put your ideas out there, but really just to learn what other people had to say. One of my favorite displays in this room would be these two cabinets. And in these displays, what we did was to try to set up personal items that reflect the society that they were developed for. For example, in this case here, we have some necessaries. This would include scent bottles and bouquet holders that really signal to society that the person who owned these things understood the importance of hygiene. It also demonstrates to us how important craftsmanship was. Because as you look at these items, you'll notice that they're all well designed and made very beautiful as well as utilitarian. Alongside of this, this case is a case that displays the new technology of keeping time. Now keeping time to us is pretty ordinary, but at a time when you had sundials and hourglasses, the emergence of the pendulum clock was very important. And as that evolved in the 19th century, we have the development uh, of a timekeeping device like the pocket watch that allowed individuals to be able to keep time accurately, which fed into the industrial revolution and transportation, uh, factory work, all those things that we really take for granted today. And it, it ushered in the modern age. 
So I'm really glad you got a chance to look at this room. I hope you get a chance to come and see us sometime live. And thank you. All right, now we're gonna continue on from our blue room into our picture gallery. This room is filled with a gallery of portraits and music. And this was a time when people would gather around a painting and use their imaginations and tell a story. Come on in and let Carson tell you more about this room. This room was used for entertaining guests through music and storytelling. Art is up for interpretation, so many stories could be told from one painting, while many paintings could be used to tell one story. Our Prodigal Son series is a wonderful example of this. Our Prodigal Son series told uh, a biblical story to churchgoers who weren't able to read. These paintings helped them better understand these stories, um, much like any other art piece. During the same time that these pieces came about, the Cabinet of Curiosities emerged. These cabinets would house the collection of its owners. They could be collecting precious stones, relics, or natural specimens. We also have a great collection of micro mosaics right here behind me. A lot of these mo micro mosaics were collected during the Grand Tour. The Grand Tour was a chance for young noblemen to travel and embrace different cultures and art. They couldn't take a photograph or send a postcard home, so what they could do is buy these micro mosaics that displayed pictures of places that they might have gone to, be that St. Peter's Rome, the Grand Canal, or the Colosseum. We also have a wonderful collection of watercolors by artist David Roberts. He was a Scottish artist that started in the theaters in London being a set designer and painter. He then started to travel in not as traveled places such as the Middle East and found his interpretation through those travels. This room is also used for music. We do have a pianist who comes Fridays and plays music. It fills the whole museum. And we do have Stacy here to give us a little treat on the piano. Okay, now that you've heard a little bit about our picture gallery, let's head into the Asian room. Hi, welcome to the um, Asian room or Oriental room in the museum. And uh, uh, Oriental room was a very important part of a house in uh, England. Um, if your son or your um, somebody from your family is hired by East India Company, uh, they will bring back a lot of uh, uh, objects uh, and a lot of uh, uh, gifts to the family when they will come back to visit the house. So it was a kind of show off that there somebody from their family uh, is hired by is working in the East India Company. And uh, uh, England in about 1780 was trying to establish an uh, embassy in China where they could actually uh, do trade with China and uh, they could own some land where they could establish themselves to do trade with China. Uh, Captain McCartney was the seventh ambassador who went to China to establish the embassy. He took a lot of gifts for King uh, King, uh, King Long, and uh, in return, King Long gave a lot of gifts to Captain McCartney. His two cabinets were actually given to him as a gift um, when he came back from there. And uh, there are other things in this room uh, where we have uh, some Buddhas. Um, there are Buddhas and Buddhists, and this Buddha uh, is a good example from uh, Japan, and it's 17th century Buddha. And when you see a Buddha from Japan, sometimes they are sitting with the uh, hand gestures um, like this and then two triangles um, above your hand. So if you see this gesture, that means this Buddha is from Japan. And then you see a Buddha from Indonesia, which is standing. Uh, Southeast Asian countries worship Buddha as a, a son of a king or a prince. Uh, compared to China, Japan, India, where they worship him as a hermit. And also, as I'm saying, that there was a lot of trade going on between uh, Oriental and uh, uh, Europe. A lot of uh, objects were made in China for the um, European market. They will actually, when they will make things in Europe, they're called chinasri, which will be made uh, uh, like a copy of China's uh, um, Chinese work. 
and then it, uh, some pieces were made in China uh, to they will copy the European uh, landscape on that too. So that incense burner is a good example of that work that was done in China. So now Stacy Chester will show you our library and thank you very much. Welcome to our library. This is a resource library and we've been inducted as the 36th branch of the Riverside County Library System. This is a tremendous opportunity for constituents to come in and actually thumb through a 15th century book or a document depending on what subject you're interested in. If you follow me over here, one of our amazing pieces that we have is the Ledger of George Washington. This document was republished in 1883, and it outlines the account of the Revolutionary War documented by George Washington. Now follow me, we're gonna see some other works that we have in our Oak Room. Welcome to the Oak Room. We have some really amazing artifacts in this room. We have items from the 16th century all the way to the 19th century. But to continue chatting about our link to the Riverside County Library System brings me to another amazing document that we here have here on hand. We have the Boston Gazette. This is an actual paper that outlines the Boston Massacre. One of the other things that we've incorporated during our closure is some QR codes. As you walk through our museum in each room, we have two to three QR codes where you could take your phone scan the code and you can get a little more history out of whatever artifact we have affiliated the code with. Our grounds offer a serene koi pond surrounded by overhanging trees. This area is as tranquil as it gets. Our legacy gardens is laced with 16th to 19th century transplanted roses, perfect space for couples to exchange their vows. The Edward D. Museum is also a full-service wedding venue.